that's the that's the tough part. Whether masters, juniors, it, it doesn't matter. Is having it's rare when you see the athlete have that mental ability to understand the meters or know where they are or have that conversation with themselves to execute what needs to get executed. It's special when you see it. Um, and that's what I definitely, I talk a lot about who talks to themselves. I talk to myself all day. Yeah. Great, now I got two dogs I talk to and they listen to me 24-7. Yeah. <laughs> Mike listens to me all the time too, which is lovely. But I tell the athletes, like, what kind of conversation are you having when you're earning, mm -hmm. you know, or when you're on the track? You know, I'm thinking about where my belly is, or Tommy's having me do a two minute plank with a 10 pound plane on my back. Okay, that's two minutes, all right, that's just under 400 meters. You know, how can I, if I can do that, I can do this. So it's going back and forth with how that all kind of puts together. That's interesting, you talk about kind of what goes through your head when you're training, and, and that's, that's something that, you know, I look back to my own athletic career, especially as I started in rowing, because I was, you know, I was, I was average, slightly above average, you know, track and field athletes, cross country runner. Um, but I excelled fairly early in rowing, at least in the small pond that I was in in Florida. And, um, you know, I always looked, I was like, how am I doing? Like, how am I winning club nationals three years after I started? And I didn't view myself as a national champion when I was a runner in high school or even kind of going through. I was like, how am I winning Canadian Henley? You know, I mean, you enjoy it, but you're kind of like, is this me? Like, I didn't, you know, see myself as this. And then it wasn't until I started coaching that I got a full appreciation for why I had been successful. Mm -hmm. You know, and it came down to what's going through my mind during training. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, you know, you you talk to athletes, and they're like, "Well, I was thinking about you know what Sally said and did this, or my homework, or this test coming up." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm thinking about you know the rhythm of my compression, and mm -hmm. you know where am I in my exhale? You know, am I getting a good stretch? Mm -hmm. You know, in my lats versus my deltoids, and you know as I mm -hmm. connect, you know, and it was that you know what you're thinking about yeah. in the moment. Is critical. I mean, you think about how many hours you spend even in a week training, and if you've got four hours where you're just thinking about rowing better and relaxing versus what's happening in your life outside, you know, that magnifies. It is so interesting incredibly. that, yeah, and it is interesting that you say that in that sense because uh, who's thinking about that at the collegiate level? Who's thinking about that at the high school level? Mm -hmm. And so you have to kind of reframe back. And I think, what was I thinking about when I was doing some stuff with? Coach Parker on the track. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I can recall doing some 400 repeats side by side with Aaron Brightwell. I had two crazy twin sisters behind me. What do I remember? Them on my ass, huffing and puffing, and me just trying to keep the rhythm of that. I wasn't thinking about boys or my homework mm -hmm. time, but I was thinking about those guys are not going to pass me. And yeah. I was 15, you know? So. But I think everything correlates. It goes through that cycle up and down. Sure, there are some days on the air going, what am I doing here right now or whatnot, but that's a really good assessment of like what goes, what goes through. The other interesting piece is, is the effect then, how do you translate this into racing? Mm -hmm. Which, it's funny, I think most people go through phases. I love to race. And then I got kind of nervous with it for a long time. And I would say probably five years ago, I found my love for racing again. Yeah. I've always loved to train. There's no doubt about that. But now I feel like I get to train to race because I love to race again. And that's something that Kevin's really good with. Lindsay loves to race. She's like, she, that woman can walk away for 10 weeks and come back and still put the throw down because she loves to race. So that's an interesting, I always look at that. We are a racing sport, yeah. But we are a training sport too. Mm -hmm. So how do you correlate the two? Yeah. You're teaching, you're teaching two different kind of levels, yeah. you know. And I mean, I can't. That could be know. a whole different other situation. Yeah, I mean, and, then, and if you are, if you are taking that training and you're, you know, you're focused on the task at hand. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times, you know, I spent during steady state imagining going down the course of World Championships, Olympics, you know, you know, when I was, went through this period where my aerobic training was just developing incredibly, and I was like, I'm gonna be the first lightweight under six minutes. I can't I just fantasize about, you know, <laughs> you know, achievements like that along the way. And, um, and yeah, I mean, it's, you know, you're focused on the task, and even, you know, 
you know, running through scenarios and running through, mm -hmm. you know, ima you know, imagining races and you know, how you're going to perform and what's going to happen, how you respond. Um, you know, if you're spending hours and hours and hours, you know, doing that, you know, on a weekly basis, then that's going to facilitate. So, I mean, if athletes can just kind of bring themselves into the moment. And then there's just the pure grit and survival. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what it comes down to, too. I think that's kind of what brought the love. You go through something long enough and yeah. you get tossed down because you have just been challenged in more ways than one. The, the survival part, the grit, is going to come out in the race. Yeah. And that's what I, try, I think I've started to try to teach the athletes and the masters. Like, what's your story? Yeah. Like, you got to have a story, you know? You're going side by side. You want to feel the pressure. You want to feel the heat. That's the joy of it. But what's your story? What do you, you know, what makes you different than the other person sitting next to you? Definitely. One of my board members gave me an amazing quote that I love. It, it said, pressure is a privilege. Oh, and, uh, yeah. And especially... I have to wipe that on the chocolate board. Yeah, especially <laughs> as, a, as a retired athlete, Competing mm -hmm. that was a huge thing because I was like, well, I don't want to I've been training I don't want to just hop into this podium race because what what are people gonna think if I don't win this race? You know, I've yeah. won national championships how many times I've won Canadian Henley, you know, I'm the coach of this, you know, this program that's very successful and then what if I go into that and I get second or third, you know, it's like but then I was like that pressure of the need to like to perform at the level that I should, you know, um, that's a good thing. You know, that was a bad thing. And it took me a while to be able to kind of embrace that yeah. and be like, all right, well, let's, let's go throw it down.